In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us place ourselves in the presence of God, who is love and compassion. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who are weighed down from of old by slavery beneath the yoke of sin may be set free by the newness of the long-awaited nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him the Lord our justice. Therefore, the days will come, says the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but rather, as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of the house of Israel up from the land of the north, and from all the lands in which I banished them. They shall again live on their own land. The word of the Lord. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgments endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, and blessed forever be his glorious name. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. O leader of the house of Israel, giver of the law to Moses on Sinai, come to rescue us with your mighty power.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this, took, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Joseph is an obscure figure in scriptures. We hardly ever hear from him, hear about him. We hardly ever know who he is, what he does, and what it's like to be the father of Jesus. But in this gospel reading today, it shows a true image of a person who is in deep discernment of God's will and God's pleasure in his life. Brothers and sisters, this is what that means, what it means to do a deep and profound spiritual discernment. This is what that, this means to truly encounter God, the presence of God in one's life. Let's examine the, the process again. We, we see, we hear, we see, at the beginning we see St. Joseph was the condition for this, for this story to happen is this, there's a premise that St. Joseph is about to marry Mary. So what does that mean? What does that mean? That means there's a, there's a beginning. There's a beginning of joy, there's a beginning of the newness of life, and there's a beginning of honors. St. Joseph, Joseph is an heir, is a belong to the royal house of, of David, and he's about to marry this little girl from the same village, Nazareth. From that point on, then the story kind of turned downhill because then he found out that Mary is pregnant. This is the ultimate shame and destruction in that day because to marry a woman who is, who is pregnant already is such a thing that, that is in, inimaginable in those times. And what happened? When he found out, then the discernment took on a higher urgency. What happened to St. Joseph? He got 
freak out, he, he fear. You see, when we encounter God, the presence of God in our life, the first thing that pop out all, is always misunderstanding within ourselves. And Joseph doesn't understand yet the fuller meaning of this mystery. And then the reaction that comes out of him is a reaction of fear. He doesn't know. He has no idea what's going on. But that fear give and, and that fear give give uh, give itself to our solutions. He think he's gonna back out. He's gonna leave her. This solution coming out of his humanly his human fear. But he never back out from a deep discernment of the mystery because what we hear next is the encounter with the angels and the revelation of the true nature of what that means to encounter God, what that means to encounter this mystery. The revelation of Jesus, the revelation of the mystery of, of the Emmanuel, the revelation of the coming of God in human flesh. Once the mystery is, is appreciated in this fullness in our life, then the realization of the, of the missions, the mission of St. Joseph is to be the father of Jesus. And from that realization come the courage. He took Mary in, in her, in, into his life. Realization and courage come from the deep internal uh, discernment of God's will. Come from a deep internal realization and appreciation of the mystery of God in one's life. Brothers and sisters, this is a process of spiritual discernment. This is a process of appreciating the presence and the power of God in one's life. Is this an easy process? No. This is a painful, painful process. But this is not a process that we are always doing by all ourselves. There's always the inspiration of God. There's always a call, a power of God. It's always trying to reveal itself in a very small, small manner. The key to the process is, is the perseverance. It's, an, it's a never letting go of the meaning of, of, uh, of the power of God in one's life. Never let go and pers persevere in, in our own discernment. Because the mystery of God contains within itself a power of transformation, a power of courage, a power of giving life the deepest meaning possible. Just like St. Joseph, when he encountered this mystery of a God in the human flesh, it's impossible mystery. It's transform him. It's give him the power to be the greatest things that we ever, we ever have. Because the silence of St. Joseph, it doesn't speak less of him, but it speaks volume of the person he is, a person of silent strength and silent discernment of God's will in his life. So that at the end of the day, the, the most important thing is not about St. Joseph. The most important thing is about the working of God in his life. The most important thing is Emmanuel, the mystery of a God in human flesh, the, the total 
total humbleness of the greatness of God and the total revelation of the power of a God who is great, the, the always striving to reveal himself in the smaller piece, the smaller circumstances of our life. Let us come and rejoice in this, discern, in this process. Let us come and allow this rejoicing, this power to transform us, to allow us to be the, the best and the fullest person that God created us to be. We now offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For our Holy Father and all church leaders, may the blessing of Almighty God be upon them, especially during this Advent season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For public authorities around the world, <clears throat> may the Lord bless them with wisdom in policymaking and governing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For all those who are lonely, may they be blessed by the love of family and neighbors and know that God is always with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For all who have died in the light of Christ, and especially for Maria Trinidad, may they find comfort and eternal joy with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayers. And let us pause for a moment to lift up to the Lord those special intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Heavenly Father, trusting in your great love and mercy, we pray that you hear and answer these prayers. Through, our, through your Son, Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice to be offered to you, O Lord, make us acceptable to your name, that we may merit for all eternity to be the companions of Christ, by whose death our own mortality was healed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Is it truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks? Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him, with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as with our end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his brother, Bishop Timothy and Tan, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
and that's the spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that your presence is the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since, Since I, cannot I cannot at this, this moment receive you sacramentally, sacramentally come, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you if you are already, already there, there and unite, unite myself wholly to you. To you. Never, Never permit, permit me to be separated from you. From you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May we receive your mercy in the midst of your temple, O Lord, and so fit in honor to the coming solemnities of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Saint Michael, Michael the, the Archangel, Archangel defend us in battle. Be, be our protection, protection against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and the, and the other, other evil spirits, spirits who prowl about, about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. souls. Amen. Amen.